Man, today I want to take the time and just clarify some things that I realized once I came up out of Christianity. Come up out of her, my people. Let's talk about it. Glory to the Most High, Yah Shalom. Thank you guys for tuning in, you know, to another episode. Today, I hope to get you closer to the kingdom, closer to the will of God, and closer to truth. Man, when you think about the modern Christian church and how polluted it has become, and it's almost just like a breeding ground for sin, if you are still in the religion of Christianity, you're probably seeing these things, but you don't understand why. You know, you probably recognize a lot of the foolishness that goes on and it goes unrebuked. It goes unspoken. Nobody teaches on it. And, you know, I'm going to break down today why a lot of that is happening. So first and foremost, I want you to realize that the Christian church you know, was formed by the Roman Catholic Church. And when you think about this, the Roman Catholic Church took Christianity that came from Jewish traditions and, you know, had its hand in developing what the Christian church looks like when it comes to politics, when it comes to their heritage, when it comes to their tradition. That's very important that you remember that because if you don't understand where the Roman Catholic Church comes into this, then you're going to be lost. So the Romans are the ones that killed Jesus. Christians love Jesus. When you think about that, there's nothing wrong with loving Jesus. We're commanded to love him with all our heart. But when you think about a religion and the Christian church being formed by the same people that crucified Jesus, Yahshua HaMashiach. See where the conflict can come in? When you think about the Romans, the Romans weren't doing anything pleasing to God, pleasing to the Most High Yah. They were heavily rooted in sexual immorality, fornication, idolatry, orgies, drunkenness, and then when you think about, and when you think about what Israel was partaking in and who they were partaking in this sin with, you're going to start to say like, man, now I can see why some of this sin has made its way into the church and it's happening more and more. If the children of Israel were punished for not keeping the law and pretty much partaken in all this sin, which they were commanded not to do. The Christian church has been formed by the same people that's the ringleaders of all this sin, all this fornication, idolatry, adultery, you know, sexual immorality, homosexuality, all this stuff. Let's go a little bit further because it's very important for you to know why their message is not the full message of the new covenant. See, the Christian church likes to say you, you, you have to come into the new and they will shun almost any other religion that doesn't line up with Christianity. And just like Americans, they think the Christian way is right. But nowhere in the Bible can you find where it commands you to be a Christian or to be a part of that religion. And I know the scripture that they will go to and say that any man that suffers as a Christian, but they don't want to get back to the origins of where that scripture came from. So when you think about it, Growing up in the Christian church, you know, I often heard certain things and they became consistent, meaning you heard them on a regular basis. And on some of my other videos, I often say that in the Christian church, they're focused on getting you saved 52 times a year. And when it comes to all of the things in the New Testament that they could be talking about, for some reason they don't talk about, but yet they get you saved, they get you baptized. They teach you all of these holidays that aren't outlined in scripture or we're not commanded to keep. And they go into the Old Testament to get you to pay tithes and offerings. So, you know, a common practice is when you hear these 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 sermons about grace and about faith and about being saved, 
A common one is Acts chapter 16, verse 30 and 31. And it says, and brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they say, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Let's keep going. Okay. This is where you're, you're getting into getting saved. You walk in and you're like, man, I need to get saved. Okay, but the, the, the problem is you hear this 52 times a year and you they completely disregard the stuff in the new covenant that will keep you from inheriting the kingdom. So Ephesians chapter two, verses eight through nine, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. You know, oftentimes they like to point out that, you know, anything of the old covenant is irrelevant, but they use it to, to, to teach this message right here. And you'll see why at the end. So you get saved and you see issues arising and you're like, man, these are some, some great topics that if the church is dealing with that, you know, a man of the most high y'all could teach about, but you're not going to get that in the Christian church. Let's keep going. So, you know, some churches, they do it twice a year, three times a year. The next is baptismal. And you get into Acts 2 and 38, and it says, And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is the baptismal in the modern Christian church. Let's keep going. Okay? But according to the first part, you know, you're saved through faith. And my question to all of the viewers is always is, once you're saved what is there to be done? And the Christian church often does not give you that. And there's a lot of stuff in the new covenant that they could cover, but they don't do it because when you look at what they're rooted in by way of the Roman Catholic church, it's everything that the Roman Catholic church was heavily involved in, the sexual immorality, the fornication, the adultery, the list goes on. So Mark chapter 16, verse 16, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. So this looks like you, you, you have some work to do once you get saved and you believe in the Messiah, our Lord Jesus Christ, Yahshua HaMashiach, the next step, you got to get baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit. And if you do not believe, according to this scripture, you will be condemned. OK, I told you they're not going to cover certain things in the Christian church because they're not built like that. And they'll give you the grace. They'll give you the faith. They'll talk about some of these things that what I'm going to point out. But when it comes to the nitty gritty of what is plaguing this world and what is plaguing this generation, they're not going to do it because it doesn't draw out the big bucks. So let's keep going, because. You know, they will tell it according to the new covenant that you don't have to do any work. You don't have to do any work to be saved and to get into the kingdom. And once you get saved and you believe in the Messiah, you can make it into the kingdom. But James chapter two, verses 24 through 26 reads, ye see then how by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Likewise, also not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out the other way for the body without the spirit is dead. So faith without works is dead also. So that's letting you know, once you get saved, you have work to do, but how come they don't teach you this? How come they don't talk about the work that you must do in order to inherit the kingdom? Let's keep going because here is some of the stuff that you're not going to hear in the Christian church. But when you look at the Roman Catholic Church and some of the Christian churches being rooted in idolatry, they got pictures of this Caesar Borga up everywhere. You know, they got statues where scripture says, do not make a graven image or a carved image, you know, of things of the heaven above and the earth beneath, you know, in the waters. But you see all this stuff and they will teach you all of these far fetched concepts, except the stuff that's in the new covenant. That's the meat and the potatoes. So let's keep reading Galatians chapter five, verse 19 through 21. And we're, we're, we're still in the new covenant. Now the works of the flesh are evident sexual immorality. Hmm. They definitely not finna talk about that. Impurity, sensuality, idolatry. How can they teach about idolatry? If they're teaching you about holidays that is serving of other gods, that is the worship of other gods, 
sorcery. They're not talking about witchcraft, animity, strife. They'll talk about strife, talk about jealousy, fits of anger, rivalry, dissension, uh, divisions. They'll talk about that. Envy, drunkenness, not fin to mention that one. Definitely not fin to mention drunkenness, not in the not in the doggone modern uh, new age Christian church. Orgies, we're getting into some more sexually related stuff. And when you think about this stuff, it's very important because listen to this next part. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Hmm, what is the kingdom of God? Kingdom of God, also called the kingdom of heaven in Christianity, is the spiritual realm over which God reigns as the king. So they they got you saved, they got you baptized, but they don't teach you everything that can keep you from, from gaining the kingdom. So where does that leave you? Here we go. Here's here's something that they're really not going to teach right here. And this is this is new covenant also. Here we go again. New covenant. First Corinthians chapter six, verse 18. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body. But the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. When is the when is the last time you heard a sermon on sexual immorality and what sexual immorality is in the Christian church? But when you think about it, the Christian church that was, you know, pretty much governed and created by the Roman Catholic Church that was that was rooted in pedophilia, that was rooted in a lot of doggone what you call pornography and idolatry. Now you see why they don't teach certain things. Here we go. Hebrews chapter 13, verse four. Let marriage be held in honor among all and let the marriage bed be undefiled for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. Now, you're going to hear some things in their motivational speeches about we want to save marriages and we want to, you know, strengthen marriages. But then they're going to jump back to getting you saved, telling you about grace, getting you baptized, wanting to put you in one of these 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 these, these study groups and things like that. But the man of the Most High Yah that's up in that pulpit is not going to talk about how you can honor marriage. He's not going to talk about keeping the marriage bed undefiled. He's not going to talk about the judgment of sexually immoral and adulterous. And this is why all of this stuff has made its way into the church. First Thessalonians chapter four, verses three through five. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, not in the passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God. Hmm. But it seems like in the Christian church, they're quick to tell you that you're the Gentiles. They don't want nobody to know their real bloodline, their real history. Why is that? Because... Once you start looking at that and realize your origins, what the punishment was and what you need to be doing, this also is going to help you come up out of Christianity if you were a part of Israel. Keep it on going. Galatians chapter 5 verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality. Here we go. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability, but with the temptation, he will also provide a way of escape that you may be able to endure it. Let's keep going because this is all new covenant stuff that they don't talk about. Colossians chapter three, verse five, put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desires, and covetous, which is idolatry. When you think about this, let me tell you some scenarios that will happen in church. And the reason the modern Christian church is so immodest, so sinful, nobody's rebuking anybody in love. The, the, the shepherd that's supposed to be a man of the most high yeah, in the pulpit is not going to teach anything that I covered in here. They want to keep to the stuff that tickles people's ears and makes them feel like they're not living in a life of sin. But what happens when, you know, your daughter who you've been trying to, to, to get out of these streets, you know, now gets pregnant early on in life before, you know, before finishing high school. And then she comes into the church and you're like, man, here they go again, trying to save her. But think about what they could have been teaching. They don't teach, you know, you know, abstaining from sex before marriage. And you you think we got all these issues and these problems going on in the world. 
look at what they're not teaching. When you look at the statistics of, when you look at the statistics of, you know, the top 25 states that have the highest HIV rate, you know, that just came out, they're not talking about that stuff and definitely not tying it into the Bible as to it being plagues and the curse of disobedience. But let me tell you what they will do, okay? When it comes to the end of the service, at some point in that service, what you are going to experience in the Christian church from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. Now, if they stick to the new covenant, they're going to give you this one. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly under compulsion for God loves a cheerful giver. OK, you're going to get that one. That one right there. We've got this tithing box. Let's pray over the tithes and offering. We're good to go. But for the ones that claim the new covenant, the one that was has used and abused from the old covenant is Malachi chapter three, verses eight through ten. Will a man rob God? Yet you are robbing me. But you say, how have we robbed you in your tithes and contributions? You are cursed with the curse for you are robbing me, the whole nation of you. Bring the full tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open up the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need. When you think about the religion that has the most prosperity gospel in it, it's Christianity. When you think about the religion where they're not talking about the things that we can do to, to, to keep the marriage bed held in all honor. They're not talking about it. When you think about this pastor that just got robbed in the pulpit because he was immodest and doggone telling people to sow seeds and, you know, doing all this foolishness. This is a Christian church. When you think about drag queens coming up in the church and being invited in here to pretty much promote sin. This is the Christian church. When you think about how people have been told that they're going to be cursed and, you know, they're sinners because they don't sow a seed and possibly may not have it. This is the Christian church. When you think about all of the celebrities that live a sinful life and it's evident by everything that we see in the media and they, they, they're, they're given front row treatment in the churches. This is the Christian church. I recommend you do some 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 deep studying in that doggone new covenant, if that's what you claim, because there are some things in there that you will not inherit the kingdom of God if you're still living in. So you have all of these people that are part of partakers in sexual immorality, homosexuality, all this stuff. They're fleeing to these places, getting their ears tickled. And this is what they're getting. They're getting saved 52 times a year. Okay. They're getting baptized in church. That possibly happens two to three times in the Christian church. And then at the end, you're getting that old covenant or that new covenant scripture that's warranting you or, or putting that guilt trip on you to give tithes. But everything that I gave you, that's the meat and the potatoes that could help you, you know, get your, get your kids out of some of this sin that could help you be delivered out of some of this sin. They don't talk about, they'll talk about a little bit of repentance and things like that, but when you think about repentance, what are you what are you repenting from? Are you repenting from cursing somebody out yesterday? Are you repenting from sexual immorality, fornication, homosexuality, the things that will keep you from inheriting the kingdom? But when you look at a lot of the religious entertainers, motivators, inspirers, a lot of them are very talented. They're good at making you feel like you're in the spirit. But what you're feeling is emotions and feelings and they're doing this deceiving millions of people. When you look at what the Christian church does not teach, they don't teach anything that's rooted in sexual immorality, all the stuff that will keep you from the kingdom, but you have to look back at the beginning and that'll tell you why. When you look at the Roman Catholic church and you look at some of the statues that they've been known for, you were like, man, the, the, the Holy Spirit ain't never told me to draw all of these naked statues and to try to carve all this stuff out. And you got penises and breasts over here and, and all this idolatry, sexual immorality, fornication. And you look at why people are still struggling today and don't even know what they're what they're doing won't get them in the kingdom. They've been sold this dog on faith and grace and beaten the head with it. 52 times a year, but they know nothing of walking in obedience in the ways of the Most High Yah. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. Check out the link in the description because I'm only shooting a gun barrel straight. Bow.